All right, so here we are at the annual motion rack for the Mammy Space Transit Planetarium. This was part of the analog computer system, which is there to the left. And in reality, what's in here is a whole series of power supplies. Now, they gave things fancy names. Uh, let's see, braking and clock supply. What do we have here? Here's another power supply, voltage control panel, the brakes for the star projector. So this was the ancillary equipment that that over there would feed to run the motors that move the star projector. Now you might be wondering, why is there an audio amp there? Well, the reason is this whole system ran on a, a whole bunch of different voltages, but the motors themselves that controlled everything were old aviation stuff that ran on 400 hertz. And the cheapest way to do 400 hertz power back in 1966 was to use audio amps. So in some of the original audio amps, the ones that belonged in there, blew up. We started using pro audio amps to do the same thing. So we were using audio amps as power supplies to run aviation motors. Crazy. Down here, you have some units which were being used as power supplies by the system. And what they were using here, these are actually AC Delco car radio amplifier modules. I'm going to go grab one. So here's one. Delco radio. This is actually the kind of thing that would have hung on the back of a car radio back in the 60s if you had a fancy car. You had a GTO or you had a Toronado or a big Cadillac or something. This would have been the amplifier on the back of the car radio with these giant transistors. And the Spitz guys figured out that, hey, we could use existing technology as part of the regulators for the power supplies on the star projector. That was the whole thing here. This actually would slide up in there. But this one's taking a whack. So it was all about repurpose, reuse. Hey, why redesign a wheel, you know? So we were using... Korean War era, era technology here for the analog computer. And over here, we're repurposing whatever we could use that was already on the market. Why not? And make it work for the purpose. Now I'm going to go ahead and spin this rack around so you can see the backside of it. So here we are with the Miami Space Transit Planetarium annual motion rack. Backside of it. I apologize for all the filth. Uh, Stuff's been through a, a hard life ever since the planetarium closed. Uh, I don't know how long it sat in the building and then it was rescued by somebody and I don't know how they stored it, but there's evidence of uh, rodents haven't been in here and everything. And Thankfully, I was able to rescue it. Now, you'll see that all there really is here is... A whole bunch of power supply type stuff. Big chokes, transformers, giant power resistors, a bunch of relays to control different things. Then there's that Yamaha amp which is kind of out of place. And then down here there's more power supply type stuff. Not much of a uh, computing in the sense of the computing we're used to. All off the shelf stuff. Common relays. It's a GE transformer. Big old capacitor banks. It's in pretty sad shape due to the way it was stored. Giant resistors. This says brake clock supply, but if you see there, it's just another big old transformer. 
everything here ran on voltage differentials. And then there was a master clock to be able to keep the thing moving along at a certain speed. So when the machine was turned on, if you wanted to leave it on all the time and see what the stars look like all throughout the day, you could. Was it used like that? Not really, uh, because wear and tear on the machine, you'd have it running all the time, and the lamps themselves were very expensive. Now from here, we're going to move on to the multiplex rack. So I'll catch you over on that video.